Good day everyone, today I'm going to go through knives with you, uh, my opinion on certain knives and some different ha knife handling techniques and some safety skills, also sheaths and a few other handy tips for you, so stay tuned. So let's begin, but first I'm going to go through each knife one by one and then I'm going to basically go through some knife handling and some knife safety with you. So first one on my list here. This one is the Ruko Survivor Knife 420A and it's, uh, it's the, other, the other brand is Mueller, made in Spain. It's nearly 6 inches long, has a serrated spine, for uh, it's meant to be a saw but it doesn't really saw very much. And it's an 8th eight, of an inch thick and it's stainless steel. This is my, my very first bushcraft knife I bought. I figured, yeah, that's cool, I get the saw on top of it. And then once I started getting into bushcraft more and doing more and more with my knife, I found that the saw was more of a hindrance than anything. Um, because sometimes I like to hold the blade further up and, and choke the blade a little bit just to do some more intricate cuts. So I found this would either cut my hand open or I'd be, yeah, slicing myself on it. So I found that more of a hindrance than anything. So I try and stay away from these when buying the knife now. But of course, everything in this entire lesson today is personal preference. You've got to buy a knife, you've got to try it, see what you prefer, uh, lengths, uh, thicknesses, etc. Just try it, see what, you, see what you prefer. I also didn't like the, the protection here because I found with, on heavy, heavy slicing tasks, heavy, heavy whittling tasks, that would dig right into my thumb, right into my, the gap between my thumb and my finger here and give me blisters and it would, it would be just tire my hands out a lot quicker which you don't want in a, in a bushcraft or a survival situation so that to me, yeah that made me want to replace it with one of the knives I'm going to show you a bit later on so that was the first one, that's the Ruko survival knife made by Mueller so, and that one comes with a leather sheath this one right here so, I'll just pull that right back in there and that's just, it's just a side carry sheath. Just fits on your belt. Boom, side carry. See that? Next one. This is one a friend of mine has let me borrow for the simple reason. <laughs> she doesn't want her son stabbed in things with it. So this is a, I'm not sure what, what uh, model it is. This is a charade knife. Or charade, depending how you want to pronounce your A's. And I don't really know much too much about this knife. I didn't do any research on it. This is just one. I wanted to show the sheath on it mainly. Uh, again, this one is this one's five inches thick, thick, long, five inches long. And I believe this is a stainless steel blade too. Although I'll have to look that one up, and I'll, I'll put the information on this one in the in the box below. So this is the Shred knife. It comes with a rubber grip, full tang. All my, all my knives, apart from the locking blades, I like a full, full tang blade. For the simple reason, you, you have metal coming from the tip all the way to the pommel. So that's a full tang knife, when the metal comes from here to here. A rat tail knife is when you have the blade and it, it tapers down into a small piece of metal that goes in, just into a big block of, of your handle. So they, they tend to be slightly weaker for heavier tasks. I don't like those. Too, I don't like those too much. I stay away from those. But all my all my my fixed blade knives are full tang, which is what my, what I like and what I prefer. Because I tend to do a lot with my knives, as you see in the videos. So that's a Sherrod knife, and the one difference with, with this one as well is the sheath. This is a uh, Kydex sheath, basically a solid plastic, as you hear. These are great sheaths. Uh, it comes with a side carry uh, loop, and also you can you can thread your molly through that if you're going to put it on body armor or onto your backpack and tie it onto different stuff, etc., etc. So you can modify that and play around with it. The one thing I would do with my Kydex sheaths, if this was mine, is I drill a hole in the bottom because if the rain's coming down, it's going to dribble down your knife straight into the bottom of there, and it's going to cause corrosion on your knife potentially if it stays in there so I do I drill a small a couple of small holes in the bottom of the kydex just to make sure it has a drainage hole 
So that's the Kydex sheath. And that just clips in and that's nice and solid. So that's the Kydex. Next knife. This is my current usage knife. This is my, uh, my last knife I made at home. This one's made out of 5160 spring steel off of a, a truck. She's nearly quarter of an inch thick. And I have a uh, convex bevel on this one because I, I prefer a convex bevel. Uh, I'll go into the other bevels afterwards, but for now I'm just going to say I, I, I like the convex bevel for the simple reason that it holds an edge great and it's basically solid. It's a solid edge. Uh, the only problem with it is um, it's a little bit tougher to sharpen. So, yeah, this is my my chopping main survival knife or bushcraft knife I use. Uh, I made the handle a little bit longer so I could choke it up, so I could choke it a bit bit closer to the pommel, and I can do a good good uh, chopping motion with it. I got a video on that which you'll see now. And also, the other thing, I designed it a little bit more like the cookery, so you'll see it's got a slight bend in it, because I just, I love the cookery. Cookery is just uh, legendary knives in my, in my book. And uh, another thing about this one, it has a nice 90 degree spine too, um, which is a great advantage for using a ferro rod. And for stripping back off of uh, off of any branches uh, that you you may want to take down, instead of using your knife blade up, save your knife blade, use your spine and your knife to strip back. So that is my my NE number six <laughs> number homemade DIY knife. So as you can see, that's nearly quarter of an inch thick up here, but I tapered it right down to an eighth of an inch going back here and also also drilled some holes you, you can see see the video I'll link the video of the when I made this knife in the uh, box below too but you'll see inside I lighten the handle right up so I can really get all the weight to this knife in the front of it and really give it a good good whack so it's basically a, kni a knife and an axe in one so that's my, my main one and this one there's my sheath for it this one's a homemade a little homemade sheath too this one's made for a back carry, back horizontal carry, and a side carry too, side dangler. So this one just slots in there, like so. So, so uh, rear horizontal carry, right here, just right on the back of your belt. It keeps that out of the way. I like it uh, a lot of the time when I'm canoeing because it keeps that out of the way. I'm not hitting the side of the canoe with my knife. The knife's not getting caught on the side of the canoe. Um, it just keeps it out of the way and it's just there when I need it I just just grab hold of it boom it's out done so that's great <clears throat> this next one this one here has a special sentimental th value to me this was uh, the first main bushcraft knife I made <clears throat> this one here is just just a little bit a little bit over four four inches long where's that last one that one's four and a half uh, Four or three quarter inches long. Uh, so this one here, yeah, this like I said, this one has sentimental to value to me because this is this is the first bushcraft made I ever night uh, I ever made. Um, it's made of O1 high carbon steel. 
again has a good old convex grind on it and also has the good 90 degree spine uh, I put a nice cherry handle on this one and I use boiled linseed oil to um, treat this handle and keep it nice and it brought out a lovely lovely yellowish green in it so yeah I was well chuffed with that one I also on both of those knives I have a pommel and I'll show you there's a video now The pommel is basically there for hitting stuff and beating stuff. I also like my knives thicker too for battening. I like to batten quite a bit. It's, it's handy when you're in a shelter and you want to chop up some, some wood for your fire. Instead of getting out to go and do it, you might as well do it in your shelter. Why not? So batten it, in there, batten it inside and uh, it's great for that. That was, that's my second ever knife I should say I made because the first one's basically like a prison shank and I wouldn't take it anywhere with me. So that's my first main bushcraft knife. And that one there, the sheath on my back here, just slots under my sheath. Boom. I do have the popper. Okay, moving on. Lock knives. Uh, if you're going to use a lock knife for bushcraft, make sure. It's a decent lock knife. This one here is called the Gerber Myth. It has a, a three inch long blade. And also you'll notice here has the gut hook too. And this is just a little folder. This is a good solid little, little knife actually. A little multi-purpose knife. And uh, you can see there's nice curved blade on it too. Good for, good for hunting and skinning. So this gut hook too. Um, I like to keep it in the car for the simple reason if ever I get in a car accident I can't get out of the car because my seatbelt trapped me that gut hook right there straight open also when it's closed you see it's got the depression on top you just press that close it down of course watching your fingers I'll just get the gloves off get the gloves out of the way so when closing a lock knife sorry to teach you to suck eggs you're gonna press the depression down you're gonna hold hold the blade releasing it and you move your fingers off the handle and bring it in one uh, another note with the with the gut hook on this one you can still see the gut hook so even if it's folded up I could use that to slice a seat belt open with ideal or even cordage just boom cordage so that's that's one little lock knife I'd recommend great little knife comes with a nice rubber handle nice grippy rubber handle and uh, that's the Gerber Myth This next one is a little uh, everyday carry knife. Just a little handy knife to carry around with you, just in case you need to chop something open. This is a little Buck 311. She has a she has a two two uh, just over a two inch blade on her. And again, it's a nice little folder. This one's made of stainless steel, and it has a uh, one of the, the little flick latch inside the handle. So with these, you're just gonna use your hand again. Grab hold of the blade, flick the lock over, push it past the, past the lock, and then just move your hands out of the way and close it up. And I got snow in it because I dropped in the snow earlier. <laughs> Oops. So that's that one. Moving on. This is my last knife I'm going to demonstrate here. And it's a controversial one to me because it's a non-locking blade. Um, I wouldn't recommend non-locking blades to anybody but somebody that's used knives for a long time. Uh, do not buy a non-locking blade for your children for the simple fact is, watch, it could close on your hand. It could close on their hands and if their, their fingers are small enough, it could literally chop into their fingers and do them a lot of damage. So do not buy non-locking knives for your kids. If you are, uh, there are, there are this, this is a actual official Swiss Army knife 
great knives uh, but there are locking locking versions on the market now too which are even which are great for your kids to start with so uh, I'd recommend a lot a locking blade Swiss Army knife for your kids for sure but this is a this is a uh, Swiss Army knife climber it has a two and a half inch blade a main blade there's a one inch little whittling blade has a good good little saw on it for intricate tasks has the scissors so scissors is a can opener slash bottle opener slash screwdriver I'm gonna soon turn that bottle opener into a, uh, a spoon knife and let's close some of these down so I don't cut myself there's the main bottle opener and a screwdriver so that's those also on the back it has your bottle opener your corkscrew I should say not bottle opener for when you take the nice wine out into the woods when you have the lady with you and you want to get some wine going the surpriser hit hint guys how uh, Valentine's Day is coming you've got that you've got that there to unscrew it and pop out the cork also you can get a pet you can actually uh, get a pen and a, a little glasses screwdriver to fit in there as well which is quite interesting ah uh, the hook this is a multi-purpose hook uh, you can use this to get scouts out of, ho out of horses hooves uh, also you can use this uh, if you say you're going to tie a bundle of bundle of a bundle of uh, logs up on the bundle of wood and you don't want to carry it in your hands like that you want to carry it by your side you can use this to hook onto the paracord or whatever you're using to tie it up with and just carry it it's a nice little carry hook it has multiple uses uh, pull your shoelaces tight there if you if you can't quite grab them because your fingers are a little bit numb uh, it's a great little hook with lots of uses and last but not least not forgetting the toothpick and the, the tweezers of course the awl this is one of the main things I was looking for when I was looking for a Swiss Army knife was the awl um, simple reason is I like to do my leather work as you can tell both these these two leather sheaths I thought you saw on those DIY knives I made two so this all here it enables me to re-sew any, anything that comes undone and fix them in the woods also uh, it, it basically doubles up as a reamer as well so I can ream out holes in little holes in wood and sticks to construct things in the woods so that's the all and of course has the tweezers little metal tweezers as well it's always handy I keep this one in my pocket a lot of the time because you know what if you get pulled over by the cops or the cops want to have a chat to you you know they're not going to give you as much hassle for this as a as a different blade in your pocket in, in Canada that is UK is even more strict um, unless you've got a good reason to be carrying a knife in the UK don't carry one it's <laughs> you'll get you get banged up for that stuff so that's knives okay let's go through a couple of the uh, bevels of knives as you saw there I favor a convex blade that is where the blade goes in comes in might rather like an axe grind on your blade so that is a convex grind another type of grind you have as you saw on some of the other knives This one here has a flat grind, which technically, if you think of a flat grind, flat grind is just literally flat point. Flat grind is a flat grind. That's a flat grind or a Scandi grind as it's commonly known to. So this one has a flat grind, as you can see, plus it has a small secondary bevel on it too, which a lot of knives come with now, which makes, just makes it... It does make it a little bit, little bit easier uh, to keep it sharp, but it can be a little bit of a pain in the butt to sharpen. But flat grinds are, are favoured by a lot of people nowadays. But I find they don't keep their edge as well when you're doing heavy tasks. So, but they do, they do stay nice and sharp, and they are good for lots of lots of fine work. So, that's uh, that's enough. Last but not least, is a hollow grind type bevel. Um, 
basically when a hollow grind is when the the knife bevel comes in and into a its bevel so it goes basically in that type of shape i'm gonna i'm gonna illustrate these at the bottom of the page so you can see so because that's a hollow that's a hollow bevel uh if you can get the gist of it <laughs> um a couple of grips for your knife okay you have the typical forehand grip you have a backhand grip backhand forehand you have a chest lever where you hold it in the backhand and you're basically using your back muscles to carve the wood so instead of using your arms you're using the back muscles this is a nice controlled manner to do it to, to carve wood and to make some nice feathers too I like to do this for feathers Also, you have the reinforced grips where you're putting your thumb on the back on the, the spine of the knife. So, reinforced grips. And then there's a second reinforced grip where you're working the knife. Uh, you do have the one thumb in the way. So, you're working the knife this way. And you do have the, third, the one thumb in the way. But, you know what? It's, as long as you keep your thumb out of the way, it's nice and safe. So yeah, hope that was helpful for you. Uh, a couple of safety things. Always be aware of who's around you. Make sure people and people know you're handling a knife. Because simple reason being, if you're there, you're with the way. Somebody taps you on the shoulder, you're like, what? Uh, you could stab them. You could. It's just simple things like that. Or your dog comes running up to you, jumps on you. Ah, oh. <laughs> oh, no, buddy. Go, buddy. Go, go on, go. On. Just be careful. Be aware of who's around you and what you're doing. Um, another thing, handing over, handing over a knife. Okay, somebody wants wants my knife off me, wants to use my knife. I usually say no because it's my knife. Use your own. If you don't have a knife in the woods, you got problems. Uh, but if you want to hand over a knife, okay, simple thing. Grab the top of the spine, twist it over. So your hand is like this. Okay, you see the blade is out of the way. I can't cut myself. You're gonna. You're going to hand this over to the next person, he's going to grab it, or she, they're going to grab it, boom, take it from you, done. And then when they hand it back, they're going to hand it back to you, same way, okay, that's a good, good, good thing to teach your children if, uh, when you're doing knife handling with them. Um, what else? Uh, knife, if, with your knife, always try and keep it in its sheath, that'll save it from getting damaged, dinged up, um, and keep it out of ha people's hands and stop uh, people from getting injured from it um, What else? Oh, I forgot to mention the patina What is a patina on a knife? Well, you'll see you'll see my knife isn't very nice and shiny You know what that, that for the simple reason is I dip this in vinegar and left it I left it there to soak for an hour and Because nice shiny knives that aren't stainless steel they tend to rust and they tend to age and you'll see the dark patches come out on them when you're cutting cutting things that are acidic such as if you're skinning an animal the blood's usually pretty acidic so um, typically 
they'll, they'll eventually go this color they'll wear it down so i sped up that process and basically put a patina on it so i let it soak in vinegar for an hour and uh, basically that that that'll that basically weatherproofs it and prevents rust a little, from taking to it a little better so um, another thing too with leather sheaths um, the leather in in the leather that's used on many sheaths unless you've got it yourself and you've tanned it naturally the leather is going to be very um, very corrosive towards your knives so um, I always use a, a little dab of um, cooking oil canola oil I usually use canola oil for the most of my knives I don't eat canola oil because it's terrible for you but I use canola oil for my knives uh, for quenching but I'll just put a dab of canola oil on my knives and in my sheaths just to protect them from just to protect it from the uh, the tannins and the acids in the in the leather um, if you want to use motor oil you can but if you're going to use your knife for anything food related <laughs> you're going to get that that motor oil on your knife on your food too so that's not very nice and you don't want to do that and so i think i've covered that's about it that's about everything so hey hopefully this is uh, interesting to you and uh, not gives you a lot of knowledge on different knife types and what ones are out there there are thousands of different knife types different shaped bevels different length knives um, I've seen a lot of copies of the um, the Woodlaw knife Ramirez is Woodlaw knife out there now very good little knife uh, again that's about four that's about four inches long uh, blade wise um, but yeah just just try like I said try out a few cheap knives see what you think and eventually then maybe even hey i'd recommend making your own knife it's easy to do just buy some flat flat steel and then use that use a grinder uh, it's a good start it just begins that way um dave canterbury does a very good video on uh, making material reduction knives so I'll, I'll link that 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 video below as well and also um a very good video i seen the other day as well uh, felix imler I've got him. I got him on Facebook, and I've seen his videos as well. He's very good with the Swiss Army knife. He does some excellent stuff with it. He'll show you how to use every bit of bit of kit on that Swiss Army knife. So I'll, I'll link him below too. So enjoy, guys. Stay safe out there, and enjoy the woods. Beautiful. This is Nick from Raw Skills Bushcraft Survival Adventures. Thank you for joining me.